Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over the newly proposed SPC changes that may be uh, upcoming this year or next year. Um, if you guys don't know, the SPC outlooks are forecasts for severe weather, including hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes um, for the U.S. All right, so the current SPC outlook levels, um, as you can see right here, are 2% tornado is marginal, 5% tornado is slight, and I'm not going to say all of it, but you can see 5% uh, wind and hail is marginal, and then we have 10% non-significant and significant are both enhanced, 15% non for tornado is enhanced, and then you can see all the different levels here. High risk is 30% or more, um, including significant. Um, if there's no significant, then it's still a moderate. Uh, wind, you can see there is a 60% significant um, that you can get high risk, uh, and hail, you can't get high risk, but you can still get up to 60%. Uh, and this is the current one um, as of right now, what the outlook um, levels are. Um, this has been around for quite a few years now. Um, it was updated within the last 10 or 15 years, uh, but this is the current one for every single day they make a new forecast. They don't have general thunderstorm, but uh, we'll go over that a little tiny bit in this next one. Um, so as you can see, this is the current outlooks. This is for uh, April 26, 2024. This is an outbreak um, for tornadoes, mainly in Nebraska and Iowa. As you can see, we had a 10% significant tornado risk, which is enhanced level. And you can see the large enhanced risk there too, 5%. There's no significant 5% as of right now. And you could just see it was 5% 2% also. Um, but may, mainly was that 10% significant was the enhanced risk driving. And you can see the large general thunderstorm, which is just uh, light colored green. And that's just basically like um, regular thunderstorms that you'd get on a usual day. Now, here's the proposed ones, which could be coming up this year or next year. Uh, this is very early in the like process of this, so don't take this stuff uh, set in stone. There definitely will be changes, uh, significant changes likely uh, before it actually comes out. But this, as of right now, you can still see 2% tornado. But now there's a 2% significant and a 5% significant. And you can see there's three levels of significant risks for everything except hail. And uh, day three, I guess, technically doesn't have one. Uh, but as you can see, tornado, now there's 60% no significant at all, which is an only enhanced risk, which is different from the early one, which is at least a moderate if it's just 60%. Now 30% could be just enhanced. Um, and you need a double significant um, for any of those to actually be a high risk. 15% uh, can be enhanced. 10% can be slight now uh, if there's no significant risk, which will likely be uh, QLCS and damaging winds could definitely be that kind of an event that has that. 15% uh, is only moderate if it's double significant now too. Uh, but now having the 5% significant is a good thing because now strong tornadoes that are happening in lower environments could definitely um, be better forecasted. So I've, I'm really a big fan of the 5% significant. Uh, as you can see, they added 75% uh, for wind. And now there's two levels that it could be high risk for wind, uh, 60 and 75, which we haven't had high risks for wind in a long time. So it's it would be interesting to see if that gets pulled whenever they get this new outlook. Um, because I think a significant risk for wind definitely should have a high risk because they're very high impact situations. Um, as you can still see significant wind percent, um, there's 5% will have a significant 15, everything now uh, will have significant risk, which I think is a good thing because it shows the lower end days that still have that upper end um, potential. Uh, and hail still doesn't have high risk, but that makes sense because it's usually pretty spotty anyways. Uh, but 60% dub double significance moderate, obviously 45% double is, uh, but there's still significant 5%, which is a good thing. I really think the lower end abilities having significant is a really good thing. Um, now total severe day three, there's still no high risk. It's pretty similar, but they'll have a double hatched, um, which hatched is just significant risk, uh, but they'll have a double hatched for day three now, uh, which could be moderate. And there'll be a 60% day three, which there wasn't that before. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see implemented too. So now we're going to go into what the one, two, and three significant risks are. So as you can see right here, uh, we have these charts. As you can see, the tornadoes, the significant zero is no hatch if it's just a below um, EF of zero or one. And then you get to two, which could be one or two. And then you get to EF three, which would be significant two. And then EF four will be significant two. And three triple hatch would be potential for over 175 mile per hour winds. Um, as you can see, it's really based on their potential for tornadic, like little EF scale level tornadoes in the environment, which will be really interesting to implement because that's a little hard to forecast. Um, but as you can see, the STP is what their first guess environment is, which is just kind of a rust estimate of what the uh, STP will be in that environment. Um, now, the conditional intensity for wind, as you can see, 60 is just no hatch. And then 65 to 80, to 80 is 1, 75 to 90 is 1. 85 to 100 is 2, 95 to 115 is 2, and over 110, very high confidence, is going to be a high risk uh, 
triple significant risk, which that definitely could be pulled uh, for very obvious derecho uh, events this summer. I, I can see that being pulled whenever they update this within the first couple months of impl impl implementation, just because that seems like a pretty common thing that there's usually one major wind event a year. Uh, so it'd be really interesting. There hasn't been a high risk for wind in a really long time. So I'm interested to see. I thought they were going to remove it. A lot of people kept saying they were going to remove it. So it'll be, I don't know, we'll set to see. And hail, as you can see, significant. Uh, it has to be over 1.5 inches to be significant and then over 2.75 to be double hatch significant. So to get a moderate risk, basically. Uh, but here's some implementation of this. Uh, this is from March 14th, so not too long ago. It was a tornado outbreak overnight, Friday the 14th. Um, as you can see, we have large tornado outbreak in the portions of uh, southeast Missouri, and they had a 10% significant. But if you look on the conditional intensity and the one on the right, they have the 5% significant risk and the double hatched in the 15%. And you can see it verified pretty well. Um, most of the strongest tornadoes were in northeastern Arkansas, and a lot of them on their new forecast were in that double hatch, but not in the 15. So it's really, I think they did a good job, and I think this is a pretty good um, just example of the new Outlook format and how it could actually be beneficial. Uh, because you can see there probably were some strong 20, there could always be strong tornadoes in that 5%, but there's no significant risk. So I think that's a, there needs to be some overlap, and having the 5% significance is a good thing. Even 2% significance is not a bad thing to have. Uh, because tornadoes, strong tornadoes can still happen in environments that there's going to be like three or four tornadoes. So it's really a good thing uh, to see that implemented finally into forecast because a lot of people have been wanting that for years and years now. Uh, so here's an example of April 27, 2011, the super outbreak. Um, as you can see, there's a 45% on the, the right one is the old forecast, the left one's the new forecast. So as you can see, 45%, 30%, 15 and then even the 10% wasn't significant, but it could have been. Uh, but in the new forecast format, it would have been triple hatch in the in most of the 15 and then obviously the 30 and 45 and then double hatch in most of the 10 percent and then single hatch in a lot of the almost all the five percent and some of the two percent even um, for the strongest tornado potential even in those lesser tornadic ripe environments there still was a good chance of tornadoes that could be strong so i think that's a really good implementation uh, as you can see i put the little chart in the bottom left corner you got the triple significant 60 risk or 7 45 risk which equaled high risk and obviously 30 percent um, but as you can see, 5% significant was introduced and 2%, and then obviously the 10% double hatch was in there too. So I think it's really good. It gets a lot better uh, descriptors of uh, potential significant risk, which is kind of what they're trying to base it to more towards. Instead of being completely based off of just the chance of hail and tornadoes and wind, they want to do it off the severity, which I think is a good thing. Uh, we're going to go into my thoughts here, actually. So in my opinion, I don't really think it's actually that great for uh, public outreach. Uh, but we'll have to see how that actually goes on uh, when it's implemented. I just feel like it's really confusing. There's a lot of the triple hatch is just a really weird thing to have. And the like general population is not going to understand what that means. And I think the category we have now is a good thing. I think the only change we need right now is to definitely have a uh, significant risk in a 5%. I even think double hatch would be okay. I still feel like it's just a little confusing for the general public um, overall. Um, but I do feel like it's going to be really good for emergency management, National Weather Service, and other like weather organizations and storm chasers and everything to see where the best chance of strong tornadoes, like significant, significant, violent tornadoes possibly even, um, will be at. So I think that's it'll be good for weather people, but I just don't think the main public's going to be that amused by all these new changes and new colors and all that other stuff. Um, overall, I still think the changes are going to be um, beneficial, but we'll have to see what happens for the public, especially. That's my main issue. Um, these are still really early. So, I mean, you can see very, very, very major changes to these forecasting colors and everything. It could be no double significant even um, at the point that this gets released. And I think this kind of a leak almost was some of these things, but I think it was almost on purpose so then that we could kind of see what, how the public like saw it and a lot of the weather community doesn't really like the triple significant just due to public outreach and i just feel like i agree with that because it's a little tough um, to understand but i think for the weather side of it it's good i almost think there should be two different outlooks i think there should be the one for like the weather people and i think that there should be the one for the public which i think that's kind of what like weather channel and other places do they kind of quote unquote dumb it down a little bit so then people can understand it a lot easier um, while there's still the more complex ones for weather service and stuff but i just feel like there's a lot better ways we could go about it. Uh, but overall, I still think it's not a bad idea. And I definitely like the 5%, even the 2% significant risk is a good um, start. Um, that's definitely something that's been needed. Uh, but if you guys have any comments or any questions, 
uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, but that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more weather content. I'll definitely make another video if they update it anymore or when it actually releases. Um, so I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.